It is the year 2010. Doug Olson is running out of options. After six years of chemotherapy and five years in remission, his cancer is no longer responding to treatment. He enrolls in a clinical trial for a new experimental immunotherapy. Just weeks later, his cancer is gone. Two years later, Emily Whitehead, a six-year-old girl, becomes the first pediatric patient in the world to receive the same therapy. Today, both Emily and Doug are still cancer-free. We are going to meet one of the visionary scientists behind the groundbreaking treatment. Bruce Levine, tell us your story. When you have a cancer, the normal cells of your body are dividing without control. Before we continue, let's find out more about Bruce Levine. He started working in a research laboratory at the Wistar Institute during the summers while he was in high school and continued there while he was an undergrad at Penn. After graduation, he took a position as a research technician at the Children's Hospital. From there, he went on to graduate school in immunology and infectious diseases at the Johns Hopkins University. Well, at Johns Hopkins, I read papers by a guy named Carl June, and I applied to his laboratory for a postdoctoral fellowship. Bruce went on to join Carl June's laboratory in the Naval Medical Research Institute and began projects on how T cells receive their signals. What we found was by removing cells from the body, from HIV positive subjects, we could grow them up in the lab and then reinfuse them in greater numbers and improve the immune system, improve T cell counts, E4 counts, and immune function. Now that's important. Bruce mentioned T cells. Let's talk about those cells which all of us have in our body. T cells are an essential part of our immune system. Specialized in recognizing foreign substances, which we call antigens, presented to them in orchestrating a targeted immune response. Bruce and Carl continued their work at the University of Pennsylvania. We moved up in 1999 and we began clinical trials in cancer. In 2004, we started our preclinical work looking at CAR T cells in cancer. What is a CAR T-cell? So what is a chimeric antigen receptor? A receptor that you design that can recognize a target that you want and deliver a signal to a T-cell to become active. And once it's active and it recognizes that target that you want it to recognize, it will kill that tumor cell. CAR T-cells had been in development since the late 1990s by a number of groups with largely disappointing results. In 2010, the first three patients with cancer were treated in a clinical trial with CAR T-cells, incorporating improvements based on a decade of laboratory and animal experiments. This was a team effort here at the University of Pennsylvania, requiring many areas of complementary expertise. Things uh, took a very dramatic turn because these were three patients with chronic lymphoid leukemia who had failed all available treatments, between 1.3 and 3.5 kilograms of tumor was obliterated in several weeks after infusion. Doug Olson was one of the first three patients. To this day, he remains cancer-free. Sitting directly across from uh, Dr. Porter, and he looked at me and he said, Doug, we cannot find a single cancer cell in your body, not one. Not in your blood, not in your bone marrow. Two years after Doug was treated, a young girl is about to validate the CAR T-cell therapy approach and change the perspective on cancer therapies forever. Emily was the first child in the world ever treated with any type of CAR T-cell therapy. She had relapsed twice, came to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, she had lesions in her kidney, liver, and spleen, and she was not far from her demise. She received her own engineered CAR T cells in mid-April 2012. I had never met a child patient, and I walked in on the second of three days of Emily's infusion, and Emily was 
there on the bed, obviously very ill, uh, and was getting her infusion. And then Tom said, well, would you like to sit on the bed next to Emily and we'll get a picture of you? Uh, I've seen Emily grow up. Uh, when I first met Emily, she was seven years old. Uh, she's now 19, uh, and uh, she's been around the world. She has met pop stars and presidents and served uh, as an ambassador for this new field as a patient advocate, and how can you not admire that? That's one of the biggest parts for me is just seeing how much of a difference it can make whenever you share something like that and how personal it can be, but um, it's, it's really important to me to be able to share that with other people. You may not realize that one life is connected to a family, is connected to friends, is connected to a community. So when you save one life, it's as if you have saved the entire world. But of course, this journey wasn't without its challenges. Years of research, trials, and setbacks shaped the path to success. However, it was this perseverance, collaboration, and the relentless pursuit of answers that turned this vision into a life-saving reality. When we started, uh, this was looked upon as uh, something super idealistic, like, well, it's a cool idea, but it's never going to happen. So since 2017, when the first CAR T cell therapy was approved, somewhere between 35,000 and 40,000 patients globally have been treated with the regulatory approved therapies. And because they're not being poisoned with chemotherapy, they view this as empowering. I'm a past president of the International Society for Cell and Gene Therapy. We call it ISCT. When I first joined 24 years ago, it was a smaller group of several hundred people. But everyone came willing to learn, but also willing to give of their expertise because we were writing the book of cell and gene therapy. You need people with complementary expertise. You cannot be an expert in everything, but if you are an expert in one element and know a little bit and then know people in the other elements, that helps to be able to create the teams to be able to translate new cell and gene therapies for the benefit of patients. Bruce's story doesn't end here. In addition to ongoing research, serving on advisory boards and leading labs, he dedicated himself to guiding and mentoring the next generation of scientists. I'm serving as a mentor to early stage professionals within the Center for Cellular Immunotherapy at Penn, as well as my roles at ISCT and other organizations. Within ISCT, we have an early stage mentoring program, uh, and that's grown tremendously to several hundred participants in the last year. It's just hearing where they are in their career, what their hopes and dreams and fears and challenges are, and talking through how to view the progression in your career and establishing networks and self-confidence to be able to move forward and contribute to the field. What unites us are values and sense of purpose in translating cell and gene therapies worldwide. We're all about a sense of community and members helping members. Those are our core values. Search for the mentor that will support you, the environment that will support you in your career development, 
And then as you're searching for that ladder that you're going to climb, that ladder of success in your career, turn around and look for the person below you and extend your hand to them and lift them up. Science moves forward, one discovery at a time, transforming lives in ways once thought impossible. For Bruce Levine, it was never just about the science. It's about the people, the patients, their families, and his mentees. Are you improving the world? Is the world better than it was? What contributions have you been able to make? Who have you been able to teach? Who have you been able to touch? Today, his work as part of complementary teams and organizations stand as a testament to what can be achieved through dedication and vision. As the field of cell therapy evolves, so does the promise of a future where healing comes from within, empowering thousands of lives. This is not the end of the journey. There's more to do. There is more to do. But we are many, united in advancing the fields of immunotherapy. Like me, dedicated to improving CAR T cells for solid tumors.